Hi guys, right, it's Miss Shutterworth here and welcome to our reading lesson this week. So for our reading lessons, we are going to be having a look at this book called The London Eye Mystery. Now, the reason we chose for you to go through this book is because year six, your topic for the summer term is based all around London. And this is quite a good book where it's got some very good description of key London landmarks and it gives you a really good idea of um, areas within London and it's a very good mystery story. Um, so first of all whenever you start a uh, book you need to have a look at the front cover, you need to sort of try and gauge what the gist of that story is going to be about. Okay so looking at that front cover what do we think the book is going to be about? What can you see on the front cover that gives you some clues and what sort of story do you think it will be? Okay so I want you guys to have a go at answering these questions as well but obviously from what I can see it's called the London Eye Mystery so that gives me an idea that it's going to be some sort of mystery story something's going to go wrong and they have to figure out what has gone wrong and you've got this sort of quote down the side that says what goes up must come down mustn't it so you've got this idea that something has gone up the London Eye or somebody has gone up the London Eye and then it should always come down because it's a big circle, but then it's left on a question. Okay, and then obviously you've got Big Ben in the picture and you've got the London Eye, which gives us the idea that is obviously based in London and based around the London Eye. Okay, so first chapter is called A Giant Bicycle Wheel in the Sky. And it starts, my favorite thing to do in London is to fly the eye. Okay, so we've got a first person narrator here and he's talking about when he is in London, his favourite thing to do is to fly the eye. Okay, now that's an interesting way to put it. But obviously he means go for a ride on the London eye, but he said fly the eye, which um, is sort of a nice, it gives you a nice image of what actually you do on the London eye, because obviously it gives you that feeling of you're flying over London. On a clear day, you can see for 25 miles in all directions because you are in the largest observation wheel ever built. Okay, so. For any of you who have ever, ever been on the London Eye, you will know that, but the author is trying to give you, give someone who has never had this experience, that idea of you can see for miles and miles. And actually that's a really weird thing in London, because usually if you're wandering around London, you can't see a lot apart from what is in front of you. So actually being able to see 25 miles in all directions means that you can see a whole load of the landmarks around you. Because you're in the largest observation wheel ever built okay and that use of observation is obviously telling you that it is a wheel designed that so so that you can see everything you are sealed into one of the 32 capsules with the strangers who were next to you in the queue and when they close the doors the sound of the city is cut off so you obviously step into the london eye and you're into one of these 32 capsules which as you can see from the picture is sort of these round um almost medicine looking things, sort of those round um, containers where you are put in and you're put in with the strangers that you're in the queue with. So it's not, you don't get your private one, you're in whatever crowd of people you are within the queue and they close the doors and you are suddenly in this enclosed bubble. Okay, so lots of the sounds and smells of London just are completely disappeared and you're in this silent, apart from the people obviously, silent space. You begin to rise. The capsules are made of glass and steel and are hung up from the rim of the wheel. Okay, so rim of the wheel, obviously the outside of the wheel. Capsule, capsules are on the outside, they're hung from the outside and they are almost completely glass apart from the steel that holds them onto the wheel. And so you've stepped into this capsule and it begins to rise very slowly. Now obviously the London Eye moves very slowly. So um, it's almost as if you can't really feel it but you are beginning to rise up above the landscape of London. As the wheel turns, the capsules use the force of gravity to stay upright. It takes 30 minutes to go a full circle. So that just gives us a little bit more information about the trip. From the top of the ride, Cat says London looks like Toy Town and the cars on the roads below look like abacus beads going left and right and stopping and starting. Okay, so we're right at the top of the London Eye now. Um, so obviously everything below us looks quite small. So Cat, whoever this character Cat is, 
perhaps the author's sister or friend when we don't we don't really know a lot about her here but that would be my guess um she says london looks like toy town which is a very nice simile there so it's relating to the fact of when you're a little kid and you've built a town out of your little toys okay so it's that small gives you that reference of something that you might have seen in your own life that london suddenly looks this tiny and the cars look like abacus beads so abacus beads are those um old math things that you used to do counting on um so they look like those tiny little beads i think london looks like london and the cars like cars only smaller so the narrator doesn't like that simile there he thinks it just looks like london and cars only miniature so sort of like the miniature london in legoland maybe where it's just everything's tiny the best thing to see from up there is the river thames and now i feel like the narrator is just going to give us a list of nice things he sees so the best thing is obviously the river thames that runs all the way through london you can see how it loops and curves but when you're on the ground you think it is straight okay so that gives you a really good idea of perspective here so when you're standing next to the river thames obviously because you can only see a part of it you think it runs straight but then as you get up into the air you can see how it actually moves because obviously rivers never run in a straight line so you can see how it loops and curves around the city which is a really nice mental image there the next best thing to look at is the spokes and metallic hawsers of the eye itself okay now there's some quite difficult vocabulary there so we've got spokes as in sort of on a bicycle wheel the um, spokes through the middle bit and metallic hawsers now hawsers i did have to look this up hawsers is a um chain or a rope so we've got metal ropes that are hiding that are holding the eye together here okay so that's what a hawser is you are looking at the only cantilevered structure of its kind on earth okay so it's this amazing structure um because it's the only only one of its kind on earth and cantilevered again had to look this up is a structural term so it's a um term that engineers use people who build things and it means that a structure is only joined at one point and it protrudes so sticks out from wherever it is joined to so you've got the sort of legs of the london eye that are sort of in an a shape and then you've got the london eye that is joined and sort of sticks out from it that's what cantilevered means Okay. It is designed like a giant bicycle wheel in the sky, supported by a massive A-frame. Okay, so if you look at the picture of the front cover, you've got the sort of A-frame, which is where the title and the author's name are written. And then you've got the spokes coming out from the middle that show it looks like a bicycle wheel. And then obviously the wheel that comes around. Okay, so you've got that image of this giant bicycle wheel going over the top of London. It is also interesting to watch the capsules on either side of yours. So this narrator has said his favourite thing was the River Thames, then it was watching the wheel itself, and now it's also watching the capsules, okay, on either side of you. So that would be the one above or below you, in front or behind you. You can see strangers looking out, just like you are doing, okay? So you've got the strangers on the wheel, are doing exactly the same thing as you are doing um, and you can see them because obviously you can see the capsules that's quite near you the capsule that is higher than yours becomes lower than yours and the capsule that is lower becomes higher because obviously we're going around in a circle so as we go over the top the one that was just above us has now started to go down and the one that is behind us has now started to come up okay so you can see it uh, moving around you you have to shut your eyes because it makes a strange feeling go up your esophagus. You are glad the movement is smooth and slow. So you've got that idea of almost like you're, the feeling of like you're on a roller coaster. So it's talking about your esophagus, which is that pipe in your throat. Um, and you've got, it gives me the image of you sort of got a lump in your throat and this person's had to shut your eyes because it's really freaked them out. Um, and you are very glad that the movement is smooth and slow so you're very glad it's not as fast as a roller coaster because otherwise you'd be really struggling with the movement okay and then your capsule goes lower and you are sad 
because you do not want to ride to the, the ride to end. Okay, so we know we're coming to the end of our ride now. Our capsule's going lower and we don't want the ride to end because we've had such a nice time. You would like to go round one more time, but it's not allowed. So when you get to the bottom, you have to get off. You're not allowed to go round more than once. You have to go back to the queue and start again. So you get out feeling like an astronaut coming down from space a little lighter than you were. Okay, so we've got a simile there comparing us to an astronaut. So we've gone on this big adventure and now we're coming back down from space a little lighter than you were before. Okay, so that might be the, where he's talking about a little lighter. It might be that it's talking about the excitement that has now disappeared because your ride has come to an end. It might be that you were anticipating how amazing it would be and now you're lighter because it's not there. Or it might be talking about that actually this was quite a calming experience and now that stress, whatever stress you were feeling at the beginning has disappeared. I don't know, that would be up to you to interpret what you think the author means there. Okay, so that is the end of where we've got to in terms of the first bit. It's not the whole first chapter. I'm gonna give you the other half of the first chapter next week, um, but it just gives you the beginning of this book. Okay, so your first activity, as you can see from the PowerPoint, if I go back, is to listen to this video and then you are going to predict what you think might happen in the next part of the story okay because like i say that is only the first half of the first chapter and the rest of the first chapter you do find out what the mystery is so i want you to predict what do you think the mystery is going to be okay and then for the following days you've got some vocabulary questions that i want you to do as activity two um, some fact retrieval questions as activity three and some inference questions as activity four. Okay, and obviously, as always, feel free to send in any of your work to your teachers so that we can have a look at it. Okay, speak to you soon, guys. Bye.